Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lippers Fund Flows Insight. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be reporting flows, weekly flows, for the week ended July 9th, 2014. I don't think anybody would be surprised, you know, to say that we had some pretty strong inflows. In fact, we saw about $18.3 billion flow into the conventional fund business, but it was kind of unconventional. Uh, you know, everybody knows that the Dow hit, uh, you know, over the 17,000 mark on July 3rd, uh, and uh, then we had a little pause uh, as we had the Independence Day uh, weekend come in ahead of us and then people really started to kind of get sober a little bit and realize that uh, you know we haven't been doing anything on earnings recently so they stepped back a bit and watched the Nasdaq small cap funds and you know other areas in that kind of Nasdaq Russell region uh, actually take it on the chin for a couple of days as investors you know became worried but said hey listen we're just gonna wait to see what earnings are actually gonna do and that really set us up uh, you know after the meltdown for a continuation all the way up until Wednesday when we actually had some pretty good news come out but really all the good rally and what kept, kept people happy was this uh, 288,000 uh, non-farm payroll job for June that came out. Actually, it's the fifth consecutive month that we've seen non-farm payrolls above 200,000, and I think people are, you know, saying this this could continue on. But first. Let's make sure we know what earnings are going to be. So they waited for Alcoa and the rest of the people to start kicking off. So far, so good. But let's show you how this week panned out as far as fund flows do uh, went when we take a look at our macro classification. Taking a look at our macro classification, equity funds saw about $1.5 billion net new money coming into their coffers. Uh, taxable bond funds uh, actually took in about $2.2 billion. And investors, uh, once again, put a ton of money, and again, they're going to sit on the sidelines, $15.4 billion into money market funds, third consecutive week. But but for the first in several weeks, we actually saw muni bond funds suffer outflows about, and it's not really all that significant, about $200 million in outflows. So again, not a lot to write a home about, but it was the only group that had negative, uh, uh, negative outflows uh, for the group. So now let's take a look at equity funds and how that panned out. That's kind of where the story was. Even though we had a 0.69% uh, negative return at the second week in three that we've seen negative numbers, we saw about $1.5 billion net new money come in to the coffers of equity funds for the 28th and 29th week. So really, it's been continuation. Uh, domestic equity funds, so about $200 million flow into their uh, um, uh, coffers, and it's the first week in four, four that they've actually seen a positive flows. Now, we take a look at non-domestic equity funds, and of course, the party continues. 30, 30th consecutive week that we've seen inflows uh, coming into that group, and it's about $1.3 billion net new money coming into their uh, that group. Small caps, if we take a look at it, and aggressive growth funds actually suffered about the same demand. $200 million in outflows about was probably about the story. So investors were running away from, you remember I was telling you, the go-go funds, the uh, Russell type of funds, the NASDAQ type of funds. Uh, after a three-week run, uh, investors really were just taking money off the table. But on the international equity side, $1.2 billion of net new money for that group. And if we take a look at emerging market funds, about $600 million of money came into that group as well. So really, the emerging market uh, group over the last several weeks has really come into its own, uh, taking that new money in. And really, uh, in many cases, the lion's share of net new money coming into the equity funds group. Let's take a look now, though, at the equity ETF side to see what type of story that told. We saw about $2.2 billion net new money come into that group, and it was the seventh consecutive week of positive flows. At the top of the group, as you can tell, with sometimes a conservative uh, estimate, you get these uh, you know, authorized participants. Uh, they don't want to be caught hanging with a whole bunch of inventory. They put their money to work in SPY, the uh, SP500. Uh, basically, about uh, $2 billion of money came into that group. When we take a look at the next group, power shares QQQ, even though the meltdown occurred, people were still rallying after the last three weeks of uh, having a strong NASDAQ uh, returns. So we saw about $900 million uh, enter that group as well. Now, if we take a look at the bottom part, we see the iShares uh, U.S. real estate ETF fund actually losing the most, about $0.5 billion. And it was followed by iShares Russell 2000. Again, here's that small, story, uh, small cap story of people bailing on them over the last week. Only about $400 million left that group. Well, now that brings us to our fixed income side, and really it's been a very strong story for fixed income for quite some time. For the 27th consecutive week, we saw inflows $2.2 billion this week, and it's the seventh consecutive week that we've had 
plus side performance. Mind you, if you look on the chart, only a 0.01% return, but again, it was in the positive side. If we take a look at the breakouts, corporate investment grade debt funds uh, took in the lion's share, about uh, $0.8 billion or $800 million of uh, net new money for that group. It's the 10th consecutive week they've seen inflows. And remember, loan participation or bank rate loan funds are actually part of that group. They saw inflows for the first week in nine, and maybe this was after reading a little bit about the Fed that in fact they do believe they're going to be able to stop doing all sort of uh, monetary easing, the uh, QE3 stuff, probably around October. So they've given us a definite date. Said so they won't touch interest rates, but uh, certainly they expect that to be completely unwanted to stop the bond buying program. And certainly that was a story as well. But they only saw about $71 million of money come into their coffers. But again, first week in nine, we've seen po uh, positive flows into the group that really is an adjustable rate uh, uh, fixed income group as well. So uh, again, uh, uh, investors are a little nervous. If you take a look at the next group, flexible income funds actually took in money as well. They saw about $600 million of money coming into their group, and it's the 27th consecutive week they've seen net new money uh, for uh, their coffers as well. Now let's take a look at the ETF side of the universe for fixed income funds. It was really kind of a ho-hum week. We saw about $700 million exit that group. It's the fifth consecutive week. We've seen outflow, uh, outflows, but if we take a look at it, really inflows. I, the iShare Core U.S. Aggregate Bond Fund ETF saw about $80 million of inflows, and you know, then the other ones were just a small just small amount. Saw a little bit bigger outflows, so uh, on the iShare iBox uh, investment grade corporate ETF, we saw about three Three hundred and seventy million dollars in outflow, but again, not much of a story to tell. Uh, you know, it's a little bit out here, a little bit out there. It did up to, add up to be about seven hundred million dollars. Let's take a look at what happened to Muni's, though. So, as we all know, uh, uh, Puerto Rico once again uh, entered the uh, the group, said, "Hey, listen, we think we're going to go ahead and try to restructure our debt once again." And that was about two and a half weeks ago. It takes a while for investors, especially on the Muni side, to pull the trigger and make it make a decision. And we saw some slight outflows out of that group as well. That's the uh, first week. And ten that we've actually seen outflows uh, from the group, and uh, when we take a look at it, again, like two hundred million dollars outflow is not a big story at all. But uh, again, first week in ten, it's the second consecutive week though that we've seen negative returns, zero point three three percent negative return. And if we take a look at the uh, actual culprit of, of the big outflows, again, National Muni's was the big culprit. Over half of the money came out of there. About four hundred and eighty-nine million dollars left that group via the National Muni side. Let's take a look now at our money market funds. Money market funds for the third consecutive week saw inflows. This was the biggest in the three, $15.4 billion. And how that broke out is taxable money market funds saw about $15.2 billion. And then tax exempt money markets saw about $200 million. However, if we take a look at where the money actually was piled up, it's been on the institutional side. $13.2 billion of that $15.2 was actually the institutional and about $2 billion. Uh, dollars as investors actually sat on the sideline a little bit on the retail side. And it makes total sense to us that this occurred. Investors are a little bit concerned, uh, you know, that maybe this rally has gone on a little bit long in the tooth. We have, you know, all the pundits out there saying that, you know, they expect a correction to happen, and it still has not happened, but people are being very cautious. And again, they're going to wait for some support to actually find out if the earnings uh, news is good. In fact, that brings us to our ending. And we know that Alcoa kicked off uh, the uh, earnings seasons again and actually had a very good positive response, uh, outpacing analyst expectations and the like. And as we take a look at Thompson Rover proprietary research, we understand that about of the uh, 500, the S&P 500, about 23 have reported earnings so far. And of that 23, 65% of them have actually outpaced analyst expectations. So off to a good start. We'll have to see what happens. And of course, if we look at uh, Thompson Reuters proprietary research again for what they think is coming up. They think it's going to be a fairly uh, lukewarm uh, but, but positive uh, earnings uh, growth uh, for uh, Q2. But they see double-digit earnings growth in both Q3 and Q4. So that, I think, is what is keeping people in the game and uh, putting money away and, and ready to pull the trigger. Well, that's going to be it for me. But if you'd like to watch a little bit more deeper dive, I should say. If you want to uh, take a little more deeper dive into the data, you can go to our uh, website, www.lipperweb. I'm sorry, uh, www.lipperusfundflows.com, and you can uh, actually choose whatever classification or group you want to do a deeper dive on. If not, you can join us next week, where one of our analysts will talk to you about the flows for the week. Thanks for joining me. My name is Tom Rosine, wishing you the best in your wealth planning and creation.